Today, we're going to talk about my ham radio go box. Hello YouTube. Today we're going to talk about my ham radio go box that I put together to take in our van for our van ventures. Now first thing you might want to know is what is a go box. Uh, in ham radio typically uh, we refer to a go box as a uh, portable case or bag or some type of method of carrying your ham radio gear in a portable manner. So the idea for me is to be able to have a case I can take in the van and set up a portable ham radio station wherever I'm at, out in a state park, out in a uh, uh, wildlife preserve, uh, alongside of the road, just about anywhere. Now I previously had a go box that I made several years ago. Um, unfortunately, it's quite large. It fit great in the back of the pickup truck, uh, not so great in the van. It's set up with two radios, lighting, speakers, meters, all kinds of stuff. It was just too large to take in the van and really kind of large for portable operation. So what I did is I disassembled that and I'll show a couple pictures of the unit. And I disassembled that, took all the parts out, sold the case, and I bought a new box. And I based the current box that I put together on K6 VMU, I think the call sign was. I'll verify that. Uh, he had something on the internet that was basically right up my alley. It uses a rigid toolbox from Home Depot for $30. It uses an ICOM 7100 radio, which I have, and a tuner, which I have already, so I did not have to buy these items. And he assembles them into a case that he can then take uh, anywhere he wants. And that worked, looked like it would work perfect. And that's what I've put together. A uh, little background on my ham radio. Uh, this is more for those who aren't familiar with it. There's a series of licenses, licenses currently, starting off with uh, basically your beginner license, which is called technician. Then your intermediate license, which gets you most of the band operations called general. And then the top of the line is the um, Amateur Extra, which gives you all access to all of the legal ham bands. I currently am an Amateur Extra, so I can access all of the ham bands. And this kit will allow me to do that, and so will that radio. The ICOM 7100 does HF, um, which is your long distance, high frequency. Uh, this is where you talk across the country, sometimes around the world. It's dependent upon band conditions. Your UHF, VHF, which is your local, typically done through repeaters for your local communications. And this particular radio also has D-Star, which I have in the van. I have a D-Star repeater built into the van. Now, as we get started to look at the case itself and what, what I put together, I'll um, include a few photographs of the different aspects of the assembly of it. Uh, showing the case, uh, uh, I made a wooden base to mount the radio equipment to. I put vent holes in. Uh, I put in holes for a, uh, an exhaust fan so that I can cool this when it's closed. I put exhaust hole, holes out one end, and I put all my attachment holes also out one end. So you can see a couple photographs here of, um, of my progress. And now we'll, we'll look at the actual finished case and take a look at what, what it consists of. Okay, what you see in front of you is the rigid toolbox. Here is the vent fan, which actually is set up to draw air into the case and push it through the case to keep the radio body cool. Uh, the radio for this is two pieces. It's got a body and then a control head. The control head will be set outside during operation. We'll demonstrate that a little bit later. So let's open up the case. Inside the case, you can see the fan, and that is a speed controller. So I can control the speed of the fan or actually turn it off. Here is the control head and the microphone store in this compartment here. 
I will be making up a foam pack to put together for that. The uh, cable for the control head fits right here in this area. And there is the radio and the tuner mounted to the wooden base. The radio itself is uh, bolted, actually screwed down with brackets. And the uh, wooden floor is uh, bolted through the bottom of the, of the plastic case. The tuner is attached with these Velcro straps, um, which hold it to the radio. Now, if we turn this a little bit, you can see we've got a, uh, a power distribution connection here. And we've got our, our cable connections. And on the outside, turn this a little bit further. You can see the connections here. I've got vent holes here and here. Two antenna connections here and here. Um, one of those is for HF, the other one will supply the UHF VHF. So I can connect two different antennas. We have a port here, which opens up. It's pretty hefty uh, rubber. There we go. That's a Cat5 port, and that has a control wire connected inside to the radio. So what I do is I plug in my cable here. I plug in an antenna here, and over here is the power connection. I've got two connectors here for what is commonly referred to as Anderson power poles. Anderson power poles are pretty common in the ham radio field. This is what they look like here. You got a red and a black. They crimp, on, they crimp onto the wire. And then they'll plug in right here, as you see. And I also, the distribution block is Anderson power poles. So the, the two power sources go into the distribution block. I've got a wire coming out of the box of the block, which goes into power the radio. The other wire goes up to feed the speed controller and the fan. The tuner itself is powered from the radio. So the antenna connection for the UHF VHF goes straight into the radio right here, directly. The, U, the uh, HF connection here goes into the tuner and then into the radio. So that allows the tuner to operate and fine tune for um, uh, matching up your radio to your HF frequency uh, antennas. Uh, we'll get into the antennas later. Now let's take a minute and show how this all hooks together. Okay, to put this into operation, we're going to connect our power supply. It could be a battery, could be a power supply, could be the lithium batteries off my uh, van. Directly here to the uh, uh, bulkhead fitting for the Anderson power pulse. I'm going to plug in the Cat5 controller for the radio head. That goes in here. And then we're going to take the end, the end of, for one of the antennas. And we will insert that here. And then thread the connector on. Now that's all ready to go. Turning the case a little bit, we will reach inside, grab the control head and the microphone, and we will now plug these two in. Okay, here's the control head. We have the control head wire connected here. The microphone wire is connected here. So we can turn this around and we are now in a position to actually operate the radio. What we have to do now is put power to it. Okay, now we'll try to power this unit up and we'll see what we got here.
There we are, the radio is on. Now let's turn on our fan. And now we can close the case. And now with the microphone in hand, we are able to operate the radio from this position. Um, I'm not sure you can see it, but there is uh, definitely airflow out the sides of this case. Okay, let's try to show a little bit of the airflow now. Here's the tissue. And if we put it down, you can see the tissue blowing from the vent holes. So we're getting airflow completely through the case, which will help to cool the radio and uh, keep everything operational. So that's the unit. We're going to go ahead and power back down. Radio's off. We'll open up the case. And turn down the fan. Which is now off. And now we're ready to disconnect and put everything away. Anyway, that's the case. Um, we're very pleased with it. We're going to have to take it out and do an operational test out in the field. And we'll see how that goes. But I'm pretty optimistic it's going to work pretty good. And we can run all frequencies, all bands off of this one radio. So uh, it makes for a pretty compact case. And we can just pack it up and go with us. It'll fit right in the van without any problems. Anyway, hope you uh, enjoyed the video and uh, got a little bit of uh, education from it. Um, yeah, I know it's a little bit geared towards mixture between van and ham radio, but uh, it's something that I've been working on during the apocalypse. Uh, this is what I built during the apocalypse along with uh, some other projects around the house. So, um, And it is destined to go in the van. One of the things I do want to do is when I go to state parks, um, do what is called parks on the air and activation. And we'll talk about that in another video, what parks on the air is and how we go about it. But for now, I want to thank you for uh, watching and take care. Have a great day and stay safe out there, uh, whatever you're doing. And we'll catch you down the road a piece. Bye-bye.